So first we'll be taking a look at the OpenAir EHR API in more detail. So if you have already set up either Postman or Insomnia, please do open that. And first, it's always good practice to do a connection test. So just click on this connection test, check if you get the response on this side, it should say 200 OK. And then we'll continue on to the OpenAir REST API folder. Now, you may ask why are there two different API folders? We'll come to that in a bit when we work with compositions. But in our case for EHR API, we'll only be working with the OpenAir REST API. So just click on EHR and click uh, on the post create EHR. So there are multiple uh, things that you can do on the EHR API. So if you take a look at the URL, this is how it looks like. So you can always click on a URL to view what the value is. And this is EHR base slash rest slash open air slash V1. So after this whole thing, uh, you have something called EHR slash EHR. So now this is technically the base URL of the open air endpoint. Uh, similarly, there will be a base URL for the other EHR scape endpoint as well. Uh, but for the EHR endpoint, let's first start with creating an EHR. So you can create a new EHR just by uh, clicking on post on this particular API and it will just create a new EHR for you. And it's telling you what the ID of this is and it's telling you that the EHR ID is uh, B5 whatever this is. So this is a UUID meaning that it's very unlikely that another person uh, who clicked on the same API even at the exact same time generated uh, the same ID. This ID will always be unique uh, for all practical purposes. Everybody in the universe will have a different UUID for all things. So that's a good feature to have when you are creating multiple things parallelly. Uh, now, that being said, uh, just creating an EHR, it has its value, but usually you want to associate this EHR with some ID or some namespace. So the reason is because in OpenAir, again, the EHR is like a big file, but it does not know who the patient is. So how will you identify who the patient is if you have no information about him? So that's why uh, OpenAir has this concept called subject ID. So you can create uh, an EHR using a subject ID. So for example, uh, you can have something like this. So we are creating an EHR with a subject ID in this case. Uh, and the subject ID right now it's in the environment variable. So I can go in here and change the subject ID. Right now it's 1234 and subject namespace is phone number. But I'm just going to edit it right here because it's easier. Uh, so let's just go in here and change the value of this subject ID to my phone number, for example. I'm not going to give you my real phone number, 99. Okay, let's say that's the phone number and the namespace, let's say that's uh, mobile, for example. And you can actually post this to the same uh, EHR endpoint and it will create an EHR with this particular ID. Now the uh, advantage of this is that you can also retrieve the EHR based on either the EHR ID or the uh, subject ID. So let's first do it by EHR ID. So, so in the first step we created our EHR, let's just copy this ID, the EHR ID. So you also need to know that there is a system ID that's also generated, but you need to look at the EHR ID. And let's just fetch by EHR ID. And again, I've put this in an environment variable. So let's just try to change that in the environment variable. So control E and the EHR ID, I'm going to change that. Uh, and done. And now send and it retrieves back the same EHR ID. And if we do this with this too, the one that we created with the subject ID, if we copy this, control E and change the EHR ID right here, that will then retrieve um, our EHR ID with this subject ID. So you can see that it's got the subject ID right here. And uh, yeah, and it also knows that the namespace is mobile. So usually when the patient comes in, uh, you have some other system that's handling the patient uh, management. So it registers the patient and it does all of that. And then they give you an ID. So that will be the patient's ID. It will usually be a hospital number or a mobile phone number or something like that. So it's very useful to also retrieve an EHR for a patient based on this number. So in this case, let's just do it using my phone number. Uh, so again, you can do that. So you can fetch EHR by subject ID. And it's very simple. You just put a query parameter right here. So again, a query parameter uh, means that you just put it in the URL. 
So there are two ways to do this in Insomnia. Either you type it directly in the URL like this or you can put it under the query section here. It's both are equivalent. So now the subject ID uh, is 12345 and the namespace is this phone number, but we just changed it. Uh, so let's go back to the environment and change it here as well. I don't know what I put in because that was not my real phone number. So let's look at this phone number. Yeah, I'm just going to copy that and you see that the namespace is mobile. So we'll just change that in the environment variable. Mobile. So now if we go to the fetch uh, EHR by subject ID uh, endpoint and you click on send, it will retrieve back the same EHR ID and you'll be able to get the ID back. So now you need this EHR ID to do almost anything in OpenAir and you will see how to handle uh, this later. But it's important to understand how to create EHRs and retrieve back EHRs. Now this is how you get it back by subject ID. So you just give it a query parameter saying subject ID and subject namespace and you'll get back um, the EHR ID on the side. So what else can you do? So you can also create uh, an EHR with both subject ID and EHR ID. So sometimes you want to have control over what ID is being generated. So in that case, you can use the put command and you can put in any UUID here, any valid UUID. So right now this ex this already exists because we already put that EHR ID. So in fact, if we try that, uh, it will it will usually tell you that conflict EHR with this ID already exists. So yeah, it, it knows that this EHR exists and you can't really overwrite it like that. But if you come up with a new UUID, for example, so I'm just gonna change this very slightly. So for example, instead of 27, I'm gonna put 23. So if I do that, I can actually create um, an EHR ID with the same, uh, you know, with this data. Okay. And uh, what else do we have here? Fetch EHR by subject ID. I think we took a look at that already. Uh, create EHR with specific EHR ID. Now it's again a very similar. So again, uh, you remember here that we put this EHR ID, that exact same EHR ID gets reflected here as well. Uh, and it won't be different. So you can do the same thing, but without a body also, you can just uh, change the EHR ID again ever so slightly. Uh, let's instead of CB, let's make it 23 and send and it'll create another EHR ID. And you see that the EHR ID is all the exact same EHR ID that you gave it. Even in the headers, it returns an E tag with the same EHR ID. Uh, now here it's important to understand that there are some headers set here. I've done this for you already. So uh, in open air, there, there are these prefer headers that you need to set to actually get the full response. Uh, if the return is minimal, so that's also another option. It won't return the full uh, EHR. It will just return it in the headers. So we'll, we'll see how that looks like. So again, let's change this a little and put this. You see that you don't get any uh, content in the body. Instead, in the headers, you do get the C tag. So it's always uh, have a full representation. So always have it as a prefer return representation. I don't know what's the default actually. So let's try the default. Um, so the default, yeah, the default is minimal. Okay. So if you don't put this header in, you will not actually get the uh, response properly. So put the return as uh, representation in the headers and let's try again and we get this back okay now you can also update an ehr so last time we tried to uh, put an ehr with the same id and it told you that uh, there was a conflict right but there is a way to update this ehr and that is if you include the if match attribute so now if match again what it wants is it wants uh, the specific uid inside an ehr so if i retrieve back an EHR. So let me show you this EHR. So if you retrieve this EHR back, you see that there is something here called UID. So now this UID is a versioned object, meaning uh, so right now you see that the version is one here. So you can update it, uh, but you need to tell it that I, you want to update this particular version. So if I copy this and if I put it into the update EHR, so in this EHR UID, so I'm just going to change that environment variable EHR UID. I'm putting this here here and if i do this then you can actually update this ehr and now you see that the uid has also changed and it's changed to version 2 so this kind of operation is also very common if you want to update something you need to give it the previous version so it can go to the next version 
so this is to prevent uh, conflicts and uh, two people updating at the same time and so on so th- i think that's about it for the ehr endpoint uh, you need to know how to create an ehr how to retrieve an ehr and how to update an ehr using this uh, this versioned object uh, id which is, which is a uid and uh, for your task you will be creating an ehr with your email id so make sure that the namespace is something like email e m a i l all caps uh, and uh, you also have a bigger task which will combine all of these smaller tasks but just so you know in advance you will need to create an ehr on the hosted instance using your email id and that ehr will belong to you so that's it up next uh, we'll take a look at the templates endpoint Thank you for watching. This video was part of the open air course that's available on the Medblocks e-learning platform. I believe that the best way to learn a topic is to actually do it yourself and learn by doing it. So, we have a lot of tasks for you in the course that we'll help you do along with more video content just like this. And if you're interested in that, please do check it down in the link below. Uh thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.